on roads travel to Orlando. She's been talking to people affected by this tragedy. Sion joins us now live. And what are you seeing out there at the scene this morning? Well, people waking up on this morning after that night that changed Orlando, making it now the scene of the deadliest mass shooting in America. You can see behind me, this is still a very active crime scene. They have the road leading to the Pulse nightclub still cordoned off as they remove bodies from the nightclub. Orlando police releasing more names of the dead overnight. The list of release names now up to 23. And they're asking relatives who still have not had any confirmation of the whereabouts, the conditions of their loved ones to meet at a local community center this morning at 10. And that has really been the very hardest thing for family, for friends. They haven't heard from their loved ones. They are now expecting the worst. I want to play for you sound from one of the mothers. Just listen to her anguish. He texted me at 2.06 and said, Mommy, I love you. Uh, in the club, they're shooting. That was at 2.06. Trapped in the bathroom. Downtown. Please call police. I'm going to die. And unfortunately, we learned this morning that mother got the news she was hoping not to receive her son among those killed at the Pulse nightclub early Sunday morning. We are awaiting an update. Orlando police tweeting out moments ago that there will be a news conference about half an hour from now. The FBI, the lead investigators, and a lot of people have a lot of questions for the federal government right now in terms of their awareness of Mateen. They now say they did know who he was as early as 2013, but did not find enough substantive substantive rather evidence to connect him to any possible terrorist ties. Of course, we now know he has sworn his allegiance to the Islamic State. We were going to bring that news conference to you live as it happens for now. Reporting live in Orlando, Sion Rhodes, KPRC Channel 2 News.